man what is happening my youtube family of course it is your boy b new i'm coming at you on this hump day wednesday happy hump day to everybody uh and first and foremost as always positive vibrations and blessings out to anybody who could be listening now as we all know the los angeles lakers took on the milwaukee bucks the defending champion milwaukee bucks on yesterday and it was a lot for us to digest and before i get started i will like to say i'm so damn sorry for not coming in on yesterday and doing the pre-game show and the pre-game analysis because i wish i could have but my time would not allow for it on yesterday as i had a lot of things going on but i will say this i wish i had because it was one thing that i wanted to say in the pre-game that i really want to emphasize and me and somebody else was talking about this the other day and we were talking about how the Lakers had came back against the Knicks and how Vogel played Trevor Reza through a good portion of those minutes of the comeback against the Knicks and of course I think throughout the overtime all of the overtime if I'm not mistaken and people were commenting like on Facebook or just whatever during that game like why is Trevor reason in? we all trying to figure it out you know he done lost such a step and then he ended up hitting a three or something late in the overtime when the game was really it, it was at four and that pushed it to seven and I was thinking in my head I hope to God Frank Vogel does not come out here and start Trevor Ariza uh, in the starting lineup because that will end up being uh, just what it was terrible a terrible start for the Lakers as they did last night against Milwaukee and we all know that the Lakers did mount a comeback in the end but nobody is impressed with that and nobody really cares because you have to do it when it matters and if you don't complete the comeback then it does not matter at all so basically what I am trying to say is that the Los Angeles Lakers pretty much show no intensity on the defensive end and I'm just not going to blame Trevor Reza for everything uh, like I said we're going to really get into all of this in just a moment but I did really want to point that out because how do you put somebody how do you put somebody in a starting lineup that's a minus 12 on the season Trevor Reza coming into that game was a minus 12 for the season uh in the minutes that he was averaging, let's say 22 minutes per game. And during those 22 minutes per game that you are playing, you are averaging a minus 12 on the floor, meaning your team is down by 12 during the period that you're on the floor. But genius Frank Vogel decides to say, let's start Trevor Reza. And then you're going against a front court of Portis and Giannis which is a very formidable front court. And they don't even have Brooke Lopez at this point, but we all know that Bobby Porter, I mean, that Clint, Clint, Clint Porter is a starter in this league. And hell, he did far better than what Brooke Lopez could ever do him for what uh, Milwaukee is uh, paying him. I wish a lot, I, I bet a lot of other teams are wishing that they had him, had his services. But at the end of the day, uh, when you come out and you start Trevor Reason, in the front court, not just in the back court. You had you had LeBron mainly playing the three, and you had Trevor playing the four, and at times guarding Giannis. And Giannis would simply have his way with him. Now, a lot of times when they got caught on the switch, of course, then you would get LeBron on Giannis, but you didn't start the game with him on Giannis. And the thing about it is, you should have started Stanley Johnson. Because had you started Stanley Johnson, then you could have played AD on center on offense and then had AD guard uh, Giannis at all times. AD should have been guarding Giannis at all times. If Giannis was on the floor, then AD should be on the floor. If Giannis is on the floor, then AD should be on the floor. It's, it's simple. So I know Giannis is going to get his breaks. And when he get his breaks, then let Anthony Davis get his breaks. You have to play it like that. Sometimes this is this is not checkers, it's chess. So sometimes you have to uh, counter what the other coach is doing. You can't always be the lead person and say, I'm gonna use this lineup to make them use that lineup. You should have said, well, you know what? They are. We need more defense in our starting lineup based off what we've been doing. And that's what we need to do. So in the starting lineup, we need Stanley Johnson who 
could guard a, a Portis because as we all know, you've seen Portis kilted from the three point line hit, I don't know how many threes. So you could have a, a Stanley Johnson out there uh, versus a, a Trevor Reese that's trying to chase him around. You understand what I'm saying? Or LeBron James, you could have LeBron James. Uh, you've been playing small with LeBron at the five. Why not do that again? Play LeBron at the five and play AD at the four. And then you can have LeBron on Portis and have Anthony Davis on Giannis. And then have Anthony Davis on Giannis throughout the whole game. And then if they do a high pick and roll, then you can still switch easily with LeBron and Anthony Davis. Switching on to Portis and Giannis. It's not rocket science. But when you put Trevor Reza in the game, who has absolutely no lateral movement whatsoever, none whatsoever, who cannot keep any defenders on him, who constantly gets lost in transition. And if you look at the points off turnovers, uh, the Lakers had what? Uh, the Lakers had 16 turnovers. Milwaukee had 11 turnovers. But the Lakers gave up 25 points on turnovers, and Milwaukee only gave up 11. I wonder why that is. That's called transition defense. That's called transition defense. Go back and look at the game and see what I'm telling and see if what I'm telling you is wrong. Trevor Reza gets lost in transition. He did it in the New York game. When he gave up the three to RJ Barrett, just gave it up to him. All he had to do was get back in transition and put a body on the body, but he ran down the middle of the damn lane right into the paint and gave it up. Now, we all know that Vegas had the Lakers to outscore them in the paint because they're a top 10 paint scorer and Milwaukee isn't and they score more from the perimeter but then the Lakers came out to the game and the first 12 points of the game were four threes so you think okay LeBron came out and hit two threes now they're going to light it up from the perimeter and this is going to be a good game but they could not could not I repeat could not overcome the poor defense of Trevor Ariza and if nobody is pointing it out, I need to point it out that Frank Vogel is not sticking with the lineup. Nobody in the media seems to want to blame Frank Vogel at all. And I'm just not blaming it all on Frank Vogel, but at some point, the coach has to take accountability for his team and what they are doing and how they are playing. And he keeps using lineup after lineup after lineup, and... I don't know why he keeps changing it. And if you listen to the post-conference, the post-game press conferences, you will hear Anthony Davis alluded to. No continuity. Several different lineups. LeBron James alluded to. No continuity. Several different lineups. Russell Westbrook alluded to. No continuity. Several different lineups. And we understand, you know, during COVID, you know, injury, and everything else, that there's going to be lineup changes. And let's face it, the the whole league is dealing with that. But look how Golden State and some of these other teams, when they have someone out, can deal with the adversity of it and continue to chug right on along because they have a system in place that is successful, unlike Frank Vogel, who does not. And the thing is, when you can sit up here and have, I mean, no, no rotation, no lineup uh, of what you want to do. Why change? You've been using Stanley Johnson. I've been saying in the past few shows, especially when the Lakers win, like, for instance, they had a good win. What, the Utah game was a good win. That was without Andrew Davis back on January the 17th. Lakers beat them 101-95 to against Utah starters, against Rudy Gobert. You had Stanley Johnson in there going man-to-man -man with Rudy Gobert. So if he can go man-to-man -man with Rudy Gobert, then why the hell can he go man-to-man -man with Portis? You need the young legs. You need the young legs. But you decide to put in a 36 or 37-year-old Trevor Ariza who has no lateral movement, who is getting you killed, and you didn't make a move early in the quarter to sub him out as the lead started to balloon out of control. And this is what, this what we got to realize. The Lakers didn't shoot bad. The Lakers shot 54%. Normally, if you shoot 54% for the game, then you're going to win the game. Correct it. 52% from the game. The Bucks shot 54. But 52%, 
you're going to win the game. And the buck, but they let the Bucks shoot 54. And for a while, and that was part of the comeback because for a while, the Bucks were shooting 70 and 80 percent. And look at Giannis. Giannis, somebody please find out or go back and pull the highlights. Tell me how many shots was contested by Anthony Davis or how many when you rest in Anthony Davis, you got LeBron James in. Like, I don't understand how you match up. It's so freaking simple. If Giannis is in the game, have Anthony Davis in the game guarding him. That's why he's there. Nobody else needs to be guarding him. If this was LeBron five or six years ago, fine. And LeBron played good defense on Giannis for the most part. But Giannis just had better offense. And you can say that about a lot of the Bucks players. They were hitting great contested shots, but a lot of the shots, especially in the first half, were not contested as they needed to be. The defenders were sinking off. The switches were coming late. And a lot of that had to do with, like I said, Trevor Reason. Russell Westbrook was abysmal yet again. We won't talk about how he tried to lift LeBron up and AD after the game, which could mean a telltale sign because they didn't even look up and look at him. They just kept looking like whatever. And then Russ is telling and, and LeBron kept a couple static after the game and didn't even say, well, that's not on, you know, it didn't really go into details of what was said. But of course, Russ saying, oh, I wish I was I, I, I was out there to help y'all and everything. But at the end of the day, how much are you really helping if you're not finishing at the rim? And I do not understand, you know, to get over this confidence issue or whatever Russ is having with his shooting, he needs to get to the rim. He needs to get to the rim and finish at the rim. Stop shooting jumpers. You're just not even allowed. Either you get to the rim and finish or you kick it out. An occasional jumper, not bad, but not many. Maybe two a game, if that. If you start to feel it like that one time, then that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, the, the rotation sucked. And then you come back out in the third quarter and that's what's getting you your ass beat in the first quarter. And you say, hmm, let me come out here and start Trevor Reason in the third quarter again. Like that was a good idea. <laughs> Instead of putting in Stanley Johnson and time in and time out, you see when the younger legs are on the floor, Austin Reeves, Stanley Johnson, then you see uh, the Lakers do well. And Malik Monk could have had a better game. He was three for 10 out of three at 30%. You'd like to see him make a couple of more of those. Could have been some difference makers uh, as they made that push. But Giannis, you have to give all the credit in the world to him. And I just simply have to say this. You know, y'all know I'm a great LeBron James enthusiast, but Father Time is undefeated. And LeBron, I still think, is a top 10 player in this league, uh, even at the age that he's in now. Maybe even top five. Uh, but at the end of the day, he cannot carry a team completely on his shoulders and nobody uh, should expect him to at this point in his career but at the end of the day Giannis you can see he just has the younger legs and he is ready and he has perfected that outside shot even a three-point shot the fadeaway shot that he got on LeBron when LeBron was up into his body and was playing good defense when they was more so out on the wing and uh, Giannis hit the fadeaway shot and that was a nice shot you know you can't do nothing but give him all the credit in the world and, you know, I'm going to sit here and tell you right now, the best player in the world is Giannis Antetokounmpo and not Kevin Durant and not LeBron James and not Jokic because Giannis gives it to you every which way. On the offensive end, on the defensive end, he can now hit jumpers. He can hit the three. One too bad on his free throws. Of course, the Lakers from the free throw line were terrible yet again in free throws. They missed like 12 or 13 of them. Once again, terrible. Uh, not so good behind the three-point line. 10, what, 10 out of 32, 30% from the three-point line. 31%, which is not good. Trevor Reason, one out of three. LeBron James, three out of seven, which was 40%, which is actually better than anybody else on the team because Monk was three out of 10. LeBron, three out of seven. Monk won on. Stanley Johnson, one out of four. He won good from three. Reed shot 50%, two out of four from three. And, of course, Avery Bradley, oh out of two from three. And this is why I continue to say these things. Like, look at Avery Bradley. Uh, 
over to, but how many minutes is he getting? So you, at one point, Vogel, had Avery Bradley in the starting lineup. Now I understand you want to bring Monkey in to give you that jolt. I, I'm not really messed up about that part, but you have to establish an identity and everybody needs to know their role. And that's the problem. You can't form any continuity. So are you going to throw Monkey in? I mean, you're going to throw Avery Bradley in for Monk next time so they don't know like how you cannot get a rhythm. You ha And I've been saying this all damn season. Establish a rhythm. Everybody in Milwaukee know their role. They know what they're supposed to do. They know, you know, when they're supposed to uh, step up, when when to come off the bench, you know, at what point in the game, when is Giannis going to get his rest. Now it's my turn, you know. At the end of the day, I know he put Trevor Reza, he said in there, to – play defense on Middleton, uh, but a lot of times in these switches, he got caught up in being on Giannis. And when he did, of course, we all know what happened. And as far as him being on Middleton, he did not do a good job because we saw what Middleton was able to do in the first half. He had 20 points, I believe it was. And then the second half, he didn't have any. So Trevor Reason, man, I mean, I don't understand Coach Vogel why he cannot seem to just get the lineup right what the lineup really needs to be what i think the lineup needs to be which of course they're not going to bench for us it would be good if they did uh, but they're not more than likely and this trade deadline is looming here what in a couple of days but my point is not going to bench russ and the starting lineup should be russ malik monk I'm going to go ahead and give him the nod over Avery Bradley. That's fine if that's what you want to do because you do need him on the court with LeBron and AD because he can make plays for both of them as well as, as, well as for himself. Uh, so I would say uh, Russ, Monk, LeBron, Johnson, and AD. And there you have it. And then watch, you will be much more successful. I know Melo is hurt right now, and he probably could have contributed last night as far as hitting some big shots and getting the crowd more into it because the crowd, let's face it, they were never into it from the beginning. You understand me? But at the end of the day, all I'm saying is uh, the coach. I'm laying this at the feet of the coach, and I'm also laying this at the feet of uh, Trevor Reason for being so playing so poorly he can't help it. It's just him. And I also want to lay this also at the foot of really the whole team for not coming out and just playing with the intensity uh, that you're capable of playing with. So at the end of the day, uh, the Lakers, like LeBron said in the post-game presser, and it kind of surprised me a little bit that he said that, and I think LeBron is calculating them the way he said it. We're not on their level. We're not on their competition level. Can we be? Will we be? I don't know, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, Hopefully he's sending a message to say the culture in a roundabout way. Because he said, well, the culture staff, if you notice what he said, go back and listen to the press conference, y'all. He said, the culture staff still trying to figure it out. The culture staff is still trying to figure it out. I mean, it wasn't a shot at him. He just saying they still trying to figure it out. You know, Anthony Davis kept saying, oh, it's tough when you got different lineups, different lineups. You don't know who's going to play, when you're going to play. Who you gonna be on the floor with? Well, it's 27 games left. And if it's 27 games left and Frank Vogel's still trying to figure it out, then you dumb as hell. You big jughead ass. You big ugly ass. You big dumb ass. You big cantaloupe biscuit head ass. You non coaching NBA ass. You ratty, dirty, rusty, dusty, can't be trusted, put on deodorant and still be musty looking ass. I'm telling you right now, I want Frank Vogel out of here. I think I want Fizz Day up. Damn. I know it's only 27 games left, but you don't really do that. It's just way too late. But why? Why continue to let this man coach so terrible for this long? And there's a reason why he went into a long-term deal even after the Lakers won the championship. Because we all know they didn't win due to his coaching. They did it due to the greatness of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and they actually had a better constructed team. So when you have a great team, sometimes it's not all about the X's and O's. Because, hell, I think I can coach uh, Kobe and Shaq. You know, Phil Jackson, for instance, had a lot of great players, but he made it work, and he was a great coach because he could manage the egos. He knew how to damn run the offense with that damn triangle. And he also 
he also knew uh, his rotations and who to sub for what and when. That's one thing he always was good at. And I'm not comparing Phil Jackson to this damn idiot, Frank Frank Vogel. Trust me, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm trying to do. But what I am trying to do is just say Frank Vogel seems clueless and lost at times. And there's people early in the season saying, why are you playing Westbrook, THT, and LeBron together? Why, are you, you know, why were you playing Westbrook and Rondo together? Why are you playing DeAndre Jordan at all? You know, all these questions, all these things, but nobody. I mean, nobody seems to want to point the blame at Frank Vogel, except for me. It's clear to see that Trevor, there's no way Trevor Reza should have started that game. It's clear to me to see there's no way he should have started that game. But like LeBron did say, you know, it's a short turnaround. They had to jump on the plane right after that last night. It's a back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, maybe – you know, Lakers played too many minutes down the stretch last night, I think, when they made that comeback. Maybe you shouldn't have brought LeBron back in when they was cutting it down, even though he did help them cut it down. So for all the idiots who say, go back and watch the fourth quarter again, they started to trim the lead also when LeBron was in the game. And when he came back in, they did push it back up, but they also pushed it back down. But that was also taking Stanley Johnson off the court when you put in LeBron, which made no sense. You took the wrong person off the floor when you put in LeBron. You understand what I'm saying, Frank Bogle? He's just, he's just incompetent. He's just incompetent as a coach. You saw what you did in Orlando. When you don't have personnel, you suck. When you have good personnel like a Paul George and at the time an outstanding player in Roy Hibbert, then we see what you can do. But Roy Hibbert is somebody who was contending for a defensive player of the year. And he, I think he might have even won one if I'm not mistaken could be but at the end of the day what in the hell are you doing Bobo? If the Lakers don't do something quick and I'm not meaning just necessarily a trade if they if they can get rid of Russ and get rid of that salary then I'm all for it I say give up on the experiment I still got faith that they could stagger the lineups and make it work if Russ was to play a certain way and actually get out of his own head and play the way we all know he's capable of playing uh, but at the end of the day that salary is a lot and you can actually fill out that roster a lot better by getting rid of him but I just don't see it happening you know if indeed they could get John Wall that would be amazing that would be amazing uh, if somehow they can get Dame Lillard since Portland looked like they blowing up some things that would be great not like that would help the Lakers currently but that would be great so at the end of the day you know Lakers just have to get themselves together. And I don't, you know, I've been preaching all year. They're going to be dangerous in the playoffs. But at this point, they got to make the damn playoffs. Uh, I think it's possible. They do have the toughest remaining schedule out of all the teams, or the second toughest remaining schedule out of all teams. But I think the All-Star break will be good for them. And maybe that'll be the time for coaches to get in some good uh, film sessions with each other as far as the coaching staff and figure some things out. Maybe that at that point in time, they'll see that shit, Frank, uh, that Trevor Reza has no business on the court. And maybe at that time, Melo can heal up uh, his hamstring uh, where he can come out and contribute and get hot. Because if Melo was there last night and he gets hot a little bit, then who knows, you know, how games can change. But Milwaukee is definitely a team that you don't want to get down to that's not a team that you want to get down to because you're gonna you're not gonna come back against them they are not the new york knicks as we all know but anyway got another game tonight uh, of course with the big trade of uh, portland losing a lot of players uh i don't think they should have much continuity and i don't think the lakers should have any problems whatsoever beating them and one thing i do want to point out about last night game too with uh anthony davis he shot 80 percent man he had 22 points and nine boards, but he was eight out of 10. But why the hell did he only have 10 shots? That's the problem. You're going against Milwaukee, he got to take this like he did the Embiid game and take it personal. So when LeBron there, that don't mean back down. You understand what I'm saying, AD? That means continue to fight. And you should have had at least 20 shot attempts, 10 more attempts. I know you got to the line, so that take away the attempts. 
and you had what 10 free throw attempts but that's not still not good enough so at the end of the day man this your boy b new as always i'm screaming right on to the real and much love to these haters i'm up here.